Hello, everybody. My name is Yan Yu, and I'm a family physician working in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In this video, we're going to be talking about measles, why it's such an issue, and what you can do about it. A few days ago, on April 24th, 2024, the first case of measles of this year was found in my province of Alberta. And around the world, measles cases are increasing, with numerous countries reporting outbreaks, including the United States and countries in Europe. Several Canadian provinces have had outbreaks as well, including Quebec, Saskatchewan, Ontario, and British Columbia. Now, all of this is quite concerning given that humanity already has the tools to basically eradicate measles from the face of the earth. So in this video, we're going to talk about why measles is such an issue, do an international comparison of measles rates, as well as let you know what you can do about it. So first of all, let's talk about why measles is such an issue. Now, in my career, I've never yet seen a case of measles. And that's a good thing, because it shows that our societal defenses are working. But just because I've never seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Some of you may have heard of Roald Dahl. He's the author of children's classics like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach. He describes his own family's horrific experiences with measles in a letter written in 1988. Olivia, my eldest daughter, caught measles when she was seven years old. As the illness took its usual course, I can remember reading to her often in bed, and not feeling particularly alarmed about it. Then one morning, when she was well on the road to recovery, I was sitting on her bed, showing her how to fashion little animals out of colored pipe cleaners, and when it came to her turn to make one herself, I noticed that her fingers and her mind were not working together and she couldn't do anything. Are you feeling all right? I asked her. I feel all sleepy, she said. In an hour, she was unconscious. In twelve hours, she was dead. The measles had turned into a terrible thing called measles encephalitis, and there was nothing the doctors could do to save her. Now, I'm not presenting this case to scare or frighten people. For those who are not immune to measles yet, this virus could be deadly. 30% of all measles cases can have complications, ranging from ear infections, pneumonia, and, for one out of 1,000 cases, measles encephalitis, which, like with Roald Dahl's daughter, could also prove deadly. Exposure during pregnancy can lead to miscarriage, premature delivery, or low birth weight for the baby, which can pose serious issues for the baby. 10 to 20% of all measles cases requires hospitalization. You can imagine how in the old days before vaccination, this would have caused tremendous disruption to local healthcare services and the economy as a whole. Unfortunately, measles is also highly contagious. It is a known airborne pathogen, and it is about five times more transmissible than COVID-19. The measles virus can remain infectious in shared air spaces up to two hours after an infected person has left the area. But the good news is that measles is highly controllable with vaccination. In people with healthy immune systems, two doses of the measles vaccine offers close to 100% protection, and protection is lifelong. Because of this vaccine, which is usually given to infants after the age of one, Epidemic measles transmission was eliminated from Canada in 1998. But for herd immunity to continue to exist against measles, over 95% of the population must be either vaccinated or immune to measles. Now let's see how Canada is faring compared with the other countries around the world. Unfortunately, vaccine delivery systems in Canada and around the world were largely disrupted by the COVID pandemic, which diverted vaccination resources and the society's focus away from childhood vaccinations. Also, the few Canadians who decline childhood vaccinations for their children increase the risk of their exposure to measles outside the country when traveling, and then bringing the virus back into Canada once they return. If local communities no longer have herd immunity against measles, as in they no longer have a 95% immunity rate, local measles outbreaks can occur and can have deadly consequences, especially for the unimmune and for people with immune deficiencies. Sadly, as we can see here, Canada no longer has herd immunity as a country. Canada and the U.S. are tied for 72nd in the world, with just 92% of our two countries being vaccinated. I'm filming in China right now, where society takes public health very seriously. We saw this during the COVID years, but even before COVID, China has been extremely successful at immunizing children against preventable diseases. In fact, China is tied for first in the world with a 99% vaccination rate against measles. This is much more than the rate required to achieve herd immunity of 
In fact, here in Hangzhou, Zhejiang province, the vaccination rate against measles is a little bit lower at 98%, mostly due to the influx of migrant workers visiting the area. And despite this already high percentage, there are still public health campaigns in Hangzhou that try to increase this vaccination rate even further against measles. It really boggles my mind that developed countries like Canada and the U.S. don't have higher vaccination rates, even when compared with the so-called developing countries. So even though we as a human species should have already eradicated this virus, it's unfortunately still here. And here's what you can do about it. Keep in mind that nothing I say in this video is medical advice. For medical advice, please contact your own doctor. I'm going to break up this section into two parts. One, for the public, and two, for other doctors. So first, if you're a member of the public, the number one thing to do is to get vaccinated if you haven't already. It's a very, very safe vaccine. And if you're already vaccinated, or have proven immunity to measles, you're likely to never catch the virus. If you're wondering whether you're immune to measles, here's how to tell. You're immune if you've received two documented doses of measles vaccine after age one, delivered at least 28 days apart. You're also immune if you have serologic proof of immunity, that is a positive measles IgG antibody found in your blood. That's done via a blood test that your doctor can order. You're also immune if you've had measles before and that measles was confirmed by a lab test. And finally, you're considered immune if you were born before 1970. Since there was no vaccine before 1970 and measles was so widespread that basically everyone prior to 1970 was exposed to the virus, and if you survived, you're immune. So after going through this list, if you find that you're not immune, that's okay. Just get vaccinated with a dose of the measles vaccine. Unvaccinated and immunocompromised people are at the highest risk of getting severe complications from measles. Indeed, severely immunocompromised people can have a case fatality rate of up to 55%. And even if you don't die, imagine passing the measles virus to your sick mother or father. How would that make you feel? If you choose to remain unvaccinated, at the very least, take precautions when traveling or in crowded indoor spaces. You may want to wear a well-fitting N95 mask that protects you against the virus. Also, measles usually presents with a classic series of symptoms that differentiates itself from other viral infections. These symptoms include a fever of 38.3 degrees Celsius or higher, cough, runny nose, and red eyes, and at least three days of a blotchy red rash that appears three to seven days after the start of your symptoms. The rash usually begins behind the ears and on the face, then spreads down to the trunk, and lastly to the hands and feet. If you do have these symptoms, stay at home and self-isolate until your symptoms go away. If you're feeling worse and need to get checked out, wear a well-fitting, high-filtering N95 mask or something like it when you're leaving your home to seek care. Now for the doctors, here's what you can do. First, ensure you and your staff are fully vaccinated against measles or have confirmed immunity against measles. You definitely don't want to get this virus yourself in the course of your work. You can also help your patients understand if they're immune or not. And as a reminder of what constitutes immunity, you can scroll a little bit back in the video to refresh yourself. If a patient's vaccine records are not available, or they've only had one shot of the measles vaccine in their life, it's much easier to just give them another shot of the measles vaccine rather than do a serological blood check looking for measles IgG. Indeed, this is the standard of care recommended in Alberta. Second, please recognize that cases of measles could present at your clinic unannounced in the highly infectious acute phase, which will expose you, your staff, and other patients to this infection. Ensure you have sufficient amounts of personal protective equipment, such as N95 masks, available, and actually wear it around suspected measles cases. Third, remember what measles looks like. In addition to the fever, the three Cs, cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis, and the rash spreading from head down. Remember that the incubation period from exposure to prodrome is approximately 10 days, with a range of 7 to 18 days. The incubation period from exposure to rash onset averages 14 days, with a range between 7 to 21 days. For family doctors with your own private offices, if possible, see patients with fever and rash that could be measles at the end of the day, rather than in the middle of your day, in a private room with a closed door to limit potential exposure in your waiting room and clinic. Patients with suspected measles should not spend time in the waiting room and should be assessed in a negative pressure room whenever possible. If a negative pressure room is unavailable, have the patient go directly into a private exam room, close the door, and ask them to keep their masks on. 
people sharing the same airspace as a patient with suspected or confirmed measles for any duration, including up to two hours after that suspected patient has left the area, are considered exposed to the measles virus. If these people are not immune, they are potentially at risk of acquiring the disease. And note that a non-negative pressure examination room should not be used for up to two hours after a potential case has left to allow the suspended viral particles to settle. Your staff can then clean the room with routine cleaning supplies prior to the room receiving future patients. Finally, suspected measles cases should be asked to remain at home if possible until their lab tests are completed and confirmed that, that they're negative. In Alberta, we're asked to report all suspected cases to our medical officer of health on call as soon as we suspect them prior to ordering testing. The medical officer of health on call can then guide us on whether to test and how to send them to testing to avoid unnecessary exposures. Testing of suspect cases can be arranged according to the provincial laboratory guidance found in the link below. Now all of this sounds quite scary, so let's end in a positive note from Roald Dahl himself, again going back to his letter on measles. There is today something that parents can do to make sure that this sort of tragedy does not happen to a child of theirs. They can insist that their child is immunized against measles. I was unable to do that for Olivia in 1962 because in those days a reliable measles vaccine had not been discovered. Today, a good and safe vaccine is available to every family and all you have to do is to ask your doctor to administer it. As a doctor, I can say that we are very much happy to provide the service for you. Roald Dahl wrote his letter in 1988 and the measles vaccine to this day remains one of the safest and most effective vaccines out there. So go ahead, get vaccinated, and stay safe. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new. And if you have, please like, subscribe, and share this video with others. See you in the next video.